Hey there guys, you're watching Code Lab. Welcome to another 5 Minute Fridays video and in this episode we're going to be looking at the overflow property in CSS. Now what the overflow property does is specify whether to clip content or to add scroll bars when an element's content is too big to fit in a specified area. So let's dive into VS Code and look at the values of the overflow property. And as always guys, if you enjoy the content, please show support by hitting the like button and subscribing to the channel and make sure you turn on notifications as I post weekly content so you guys never miss an update. So to our left here inside VS Code, you can see we're inside a folder called Overflow Property, which has two files of index.html and style.css inside of it. Now in the index file, you can see we have a really basic document layout here. Um, inside the body, we have a H1 um, with the content of Overflow Property, which you can see here in the browser. Underneath that, we have a div of the class of container, which contains our four boxes. So um, each of the boxes has a class of boxes, so a general uh, class, and then they all have their own individual class of the value that we're gonna be um, demonstrating in a moment for the overflow property. So then underneath that, you can see we just have a H2 um, and also a paragraph tag um, with some dummy text inside of it. So if we had inside the style sheet now, uh, you can see we have some global styles at the top. The body has that uh, linear gradient color that you see here, also has a height of 100 viewport heights. The container class, um, I'm using display grid uh, to lay this out. So we've got two columns, um, each with a width of one FR. And then we just have some alignment properties here. And then we also have a grid gap of about 30 pixels to put a bit of space between uh, the boxes. And then underneath that, we just have some general styles for the H1 and the H2. And then as you can see here, um, I've just given some general styles to the boxes. So they've got a border, a bit of padding, uh, border radius and then I've just made the font size a bit bigger so currently right now the boxes that surround the elements and the text are quite responsive meaning that um, they're only taking up the space required which in this case is the h2 and again the paragraph with the dummy text inside of it now again to show you guys exactly what I mean by the responsiveness if I add some more dummy text to the first box here which is going to be 30 bits of dummy text you can see the first box automatically adjusts to fit that text inside of it now this is fine but issues can arise when we add a fixed height to the box class so what I'm going to do is just convert that back to less dummy text and I'm going to go inside the boxes class and I'm just going to give this a height of let's say 400 pixels. And if you look in the browser now, the text actually starts overflowing. Now this is when the overflow property can come in and fix this issue. So as you can see already, the uh, overflow property has several values, but the most common ones you'll see is the auto, the scroll, the visible and the hidden. So we'll start off with the auto. So this has a class of auto. I'm just going to say overflow to auto and what this essentially does is that any text that was overflowing it now becomes hidden and then a scroll bar appears so we can scroll down and see the rest of the text so that's how the auto value works now the scroll is pretty similar to be fair it's um if i just put it in here and change the value to scroll the text again becomes hidden but we actually get a scroll bar on the x-axis as well as the y-axis now now visible value, if I put it in here, so overflow uh, visible, you see nothing changes because the default is already set to visible. So the content um, doesn't get clipped and we can see it overflowing out of the box. And then the last one we're gonna see is the hidden. So we'll just uh, set the overflow value here to hidden. And what this value does is essentially what it says on the tin, any content that will be overflowing will be hidden and it won't give us any scroll bars here to see the rest of the content. Now this value is particularly useful for CSS animations and if you guys wanna see it used in a practical sense, check out my advanced CSS image overlay video. And that will pretty much conclude the video guys. So a short video about the overflow property which may seem obsolete, but I can assure you there will be times you will need it, especially in cases when you wanna create some cool animations. And again, guys, if you like the content, please hit the like button and please consider subscribing and I'll see you guys next time.